and she was never heard from again. You missed a real doozy last night there, buddy. Yeah, I know. But it was good. I actually felt very good on my midterm. Oh, yeah, you had your yeah. midterm. It was worth it. No one cares about your education. <laughs> I think so. college university is personally. Well, I thought it was just the American version was college and no. Canadian was uni. No. no. Okay. Whatever. Because there's like different forms of the schooling, so they label them differently. Like I think in college you get a diploma, oh, you whereas get university you get a degree. Um, and then I think you can also, like I don't fucking know the breakdowns. I don't think it matters. I think it matters a lot. I went to college, so... For four years. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the F Word Podcast, the best podcast you'll never know. I'm your host, G. With me is Vass and Anthony. Hello. Oh, hi. Cat got your tongue? No, we don't usually say anything at the start. I know, but you just introduce us. Just throw something in there. Just so they know the voice. Just throw something in there. That's it. Just so they could be like, is he actually there? Is he just saying he's there? And then there's like a blow up doll with your face on it, which would be super weird, but. Ultimately hilarious. Um, yeah, hope everyone's having a good time. Um, as you all know, the mm-hmm. F-Word is part of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network, which is uh, sponsored by the Connexus Credit Union. Um, it's a great plug-in. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's come to the point where it's just like the same thing over and over, and I'm trying to do it in a way that like works. That's fair. Sure, and by sure. works, I mean as quick, easy, and to the point. Uh, as Classic before, G. Just ask his wife. <laughs> Sex jokes. Don't make sex jokes. Sex jokes about my wife. I don't make them about your mom. You can't make them about my wife. It's more about you. Yeah. Is <laughs> it though? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> Fuck. Go for it, man. Have have a blast. Good. I'm like Arthur Fleck. I have my whole notebook full of them. Yeah. I don't have a notebook. It's I'm just a sorry. bunch of like uh, supposedly smiley faces with little sad, like actual sad faces. That's all it is. One randomly depressed quote that I just zoom over. Uh, yeah. What is me? What's just life? scribbled over and over and over again. It's gonna what? find it. Yeah. Um. It's a lot of stuff to get to, actually. Uh, I, but like yesterday, or no, was it two, three days ago? I was looking. I'm like, fuck, we've got nothing to talk about. And yeah. then, obviously, like then I started like digging into the usual spots, and then found some shit. Mm-hmm. I already uh, have the perfect title for the episode, by the way. We it's haven't even. Started. I know, but it's just already great. It's something to support something important and like much bigger than all of us. Oh. Hashtag. Release the Snyder Cut. That's what you want? I think that's 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 a good title. Is that where you want to start to? No, that could be the last. That's going to be the beefiest one. You just start it. Oh, we can start the movement. We could talk about the Snyder Cut. That's just a bunch of DC news, honestly. Okay, well, I don't have that much DC news. I've got um, some Witcher news, which just came out today. Um, uh, Pornhub joining the streaming wars, which I think is fucking hilarious. Daniel Craig saying uh, this last James Bond is his last one. Uh, the Harriet Tubman and Julia Roberts thing. Did you guys see that? No. Oh, man, it's fucked. It's so funny. Uh, Disney Plus agreements, uh, the Nicolas Cage supposed movie, which I am all for. <laughs> um, obviously, some Joker stuff because, uh, man, fucking all the money. Mm-hmm. But because all this week, it's there is a sequel. There isn't a sequel. There's rumors of a sequel. It's not actually happening. And then finally, Todd Phillips like came out with the definitive, like, cool your jet, Starsky. And then uh, Snyder Cut. I believe Ben Affleck's like the newest person to uh Ben Affleck was the biggest person, I would say. Like the one that like to join shouldn't the have said it. Had no he reason shouldn't to shouldn't have? He had no reason to say it, which I'm not saying he shouldn't like bad on him, but like he was the guy it. he backed up the fact that he's saying it. I'm happy. Um Mandalorian he from that. We'll have to elaborate on that later. Yeah. Well he'd gain cool. from it from the fact like he was in it. Yeah, I know, but he still like took away the role. It's not like like he's like he backed out, right? He did back out like I think he backed out. From the Batman movie he was going like to do. just the movie? I think Because so. they said that's not canon to the DCEU, right? Right. No, but at the time, I, I think there was supposed, was supposed to, to be, be. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. That, I mean, it was all over the place. Fish your list and we'll get into it. Sure. Mandalorian Episode 3 we'll obviously talk about. And then um, I think that's it. You sent something just before we got here. Oh, and John Turturro also being in Oh, yeah. The Batman. That's actually, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad they have. So they have Penguin, Falcone. Yep. And that's it. 
Nope. Penguin, Falcon, Alf. Oh, in who's terms of pe- villains. Yeah, who's villains. Penguin? Colin Farrell. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's confirmed. Remember? Yeah. yeah. No, I don't. Well, I think after that, Alfred was confirmed. I think Colin Farrell was in talks. No, I think it was confirmed. I think they were no, both. No, I remember no, I, saw, just... I saw IGN. I kept reading it. It would say Feral Sirkins, and I kept reading it Farewell Sirkins. No. And I'm like, what, what the, the fuck f- is yeah. Sirkins? Colin Farrell and Andy Sirkins were in talks. Uh, one for, obviously, Alfred, one for the Penguin. And only the... They both Alf- are. No, Alfred was the only one confirmed, as far as I know. Did he just get confirmed today? No. no Alfred was, was last time. This was last time. This no. was literally the day or two days after last week's episode. Yeah. I think it would have been Sunday. Okay. That because you send it, you said Alfred's confirmed. Okay, we yeah. talked about it on the, on the show last week, right? But I, I don't remember if we were talking hypothetical, like we were talking like, oh, these are rumors and these are the main casting, or if we were like, this that. is what's happening. The week before that is when both of those got released. Last week we got to Alfred was confirmed, mm-hmm. and now we're still waiting on Penguin. We don't know yet. No, I'm pretty sure he is confirmed. You think so? I'm like 99 percent sure right, Farrell is because con- I Jen posted it. Eventually, when we get big. We'll have a guy on the side, a guy in the computer. Okay, Vasily, back up real quick so we can talk off screen to you. Well, that's not going to work because we still need a three. Um, we went to a thing last night, actually, before we get into our topics. Um, it was really funny because, like, so it was a podcasting event. Mm-hmm. And by that, it was just a bunch of people under the network that were invited to this thing. There wasn't that many people, but there was enough. And they had speakers and this guy from like, they used to work for the BBC and he's a big broadcaster and stuff. And I don't know exactly know his full story. And then they had um, some other people from the CBC there that like, what is it? No. Say it. That's just one article. That's a matter. Read the news. Cinema Blend is what you said. Yeah, but Cinema Blend is nah. Cinema Blend was the ones that said, oh, Joker's sequel is happening. And then. Deadline. Colin Farrell in talks. There we go. That's it. (laughs) Literally first line. Hollywood Reporter, Colin Farrell in talks to play the Penguin. Yeah, that could mean anything. EW, Colin Farrell in talks to play the Penguin. Right. Okay, so Colin Colin Farrell. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm getting at. He's saying it's confirmed. So we're not sure if it's confirmed or not is what you're saying. (laughs) They're in talks. Um, Anyways, it was just really funny because there was like, I think, 25 people there. Yeah. And like every time they asked the audience to like to kind of be a part of it in terms of hey what do you guys use what do you guys use it was pretty silent for a bunch of people that run podcasts because and just, we were a part of it like was because like lots of people didn't want to reveal like what they did i yeah. think so like Which i just why fair. I never... it's not like a not like a dick thing like oh look at that well like they they thing. named a few well some it was like at one point they said like what do you use this do you use that and yeah. then it was open floor to whoever wanted to say something and whatever you didn't say anything because again i didn't yeah, no. We met some. Uh, we met some people. I try to avoid talking to people in these events, even though it's a. First of all, I hate the word networking. Mm-hmm. That that the second I hear that word, I check out automatically. Yeah. It's so weird because it's just a word, but just the idea of networking bothers me, and it gives me a little bit of anxiety. So, like yesterday, I was just like, they were interviewing the people so they can put it together as part of a snippet. So one by one, people were inter- being interviewed on camera, and. Uh, and they were talking about their podcast and stuff. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck to say about our show. Like, I have no idea. First of all, like, I don't know. We're small potatoes, I think, compared to everybody else. And I like that. Like, we're, I think we're very specific. I think mm-hmm. a very specific person enjoys our stuff. Which, by the way, also another segue. Jason Hamilton ran into him at, uh, at a hockey game this past week. And he told me that he listens to the show. So, Jason, if you're listening, this guy to Nick mm-hmm. was like his right-hand guy before Nick even took over the restaurant. Not only that, J- Jason would go to university classes for him mm-hmm. so he can be counted as being part of the class while Nick worked at the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Oh, they take attendance. Yeah, I-, I guess so. It was just so fun. Nick's like, I don't want to go to class. You just go for me. And Jason would fucking go to the class and sit in there. It was so funny. Anyways, and by so funny, I mean hearing it is hilarious. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, Jason, if you're listening, what's up, man? Anyways, so I was like... The fuck are we gonna do here? Like all these, I feel like all these people think their shows are really good, and maybe they really are, and we're the only ones that are like, we just kind of meet once a week and just talk. So I had no idea what the fuck to say. Was it like really professional, or was it like more like was it like really strict, or was it more slack in terms of like environment? No, it was definitely slack. It was slack. Yeah, like you talked to a guy. I did. Yeah, Uh, this guy's podcast. I can't remember, but he does like uh, kind of on the conspiracy theory, conspiracy slash uh, 
social issues, uh, religious stuff, that kind of like mm-hmm. against kind of thing or going against the norms. Anything against the norm, he's kind of touches on. So it's like it's got a good range of that kind of stuff. So yeah. yeah. And his he's, name was Norm, right? No. That was a different guy. <laughs> just this guy shows called Against the Norm. His name is Norm, and it's just him, like in front of a mirror, just talking, going against everything he believes. Why would it in? be in a podcast? How would the mirror <laughs> How come through? Funny, because it was the, you know the premise of the thing. Oh. It's like oh, it's, it's it's called Against the Norm. The host's name is Norm, and he just sits there going against himself on everything. I think that'd be hilarious. No, mm, nothing. Nah. Fuck yes, and guys. Yeah. Yes, and guys. indeed. Um. Anyways, it was just yeah, I I don't do well in those at all, and also does like, that ever pick up on the like actual podcast? What that the, my phone vibrated? Yeah, no, really. I mean, maybe it does. Oh, probably. I think I, that doesn't bother me. I don't no, know. it doesn't bother me. I'm just like I was generally curious because it happened oh. a couple times like prior to this, and I, was, I always wondered. Mm. You know what's weird? At night sometimes there's different notifications that come in. Like I'm on a Discord chat mm-hmm. for a game I'm playing, and then every, like that thing when it vibrates. Fuck, it wakes everybody up. And usually these guys start messaging at 1 o'clock in yeah. the morning. I'm like, Jesus. That's why I have do not disturb on my sleep. Yeah, I got to do that. I always forget. It's one of those things like first thing in the morning or when it happens, I think of it. Mm-hmm. But I just want to go back to sleep. Oh, I always, I, I just usually have it on all the time. So like, I always miss things. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, whatever. I'll get to it when I get to it. It's not that I always have it on vibrate. Like I, I rarely have my phone on. Well, I mean, like, like in terms of, sorry, the, the notifications yeah. up. I'm always in that like, I'm never in a spot where I can have my ringer on. And like not be scared that it's going to go off mm-hmm. on the odd chance someone like mm-hmm. calls me or texts me because like I don't I won't have Wi-Fi or data on yeah twenty four seven so I'm just like I'm at you know church work school like I don't want someone to call me and then just some random ringtone goes off and I'm like yeah. that one clown fumbling for their phone hmm. mm-hmm. yeah it's funny when that happens I also think I've just conditioned myself now to always have it so if I'm worried if it's on or not I know that mm-hmm. at least ninety percent of the time. It's I know it's off. And so that's why I'm not too concerned about it yeah. as, uh, as I used to be. So I don't know. Anyways, thing was fine. It was okay. Don't do very well with that. Didn't know what to say. Said some stuff. And then we Are left. you both on the video feature? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. They brought him too. I told him he should just stand behind me the whole time with a very crossed. stern face. And then everything I say, he just goes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That'd be hilarious. And if for those of you who don't know, I believe that is a trading places I think it's a trading places reference. Oh uh, yeah, he, the just the guy going yeah. I think that's trading places. The Anyways. only thing I know from trading places community. Yeah, that's not the same thing. Yeah, trading yeah. places an old Dan Aykroyd and yeah, uh, no, no, yeah. it's not okay. community. Like, it's um. Like, anyways, yeah. Do we go to release the Snyder cut starting, or it. do you want to go with it last? No, I feel like last. Okay, we'll go last. Unless you want Mandalorian to be last. Mandalorian. I love this episode. It was good. Okay. Well, we'll you see. both you both have t- topics that you're super into. Uh, super into, so we'll leave both of them towards the end. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. The All right. Witcher releases. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. The Witcher releases the uh, list of the first eight episodes, and by the first eight, I think it's just eight episodes a season, right? It's, yeah. Okay. First one, at least. And the first one proves, or at least uh, supports, what I thought it was going to be about. Literally called the end's beginning. Oh, by the way, if you don't want spoilers, then. You can just hold off for like 10 You're minutes. You're not going to remember. Deal with it. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> episode one's called The End's Beginning. And each of these have a little poem, which I really like. A monster slain, a butcher named Butcher of Blaviken. That's what's going to happen. I'm super okay, so stoked. Okay, so his story starts exactly where you think it did. I think, yeah. I yeah. think that's what it's going to happen, which is awesome. Uh, four marks. We look at a sorceress's early days. Mostly about Yennefer. Mm-hmm. My guess, Betrayer, Moon, a picky eater, a family shamed. My guess is Siri. That's my guess. Uh, her dad ends up being like the high ruler, mm. and he, it's like thanks. Uh, uh, the whole world all, all, all like has she is an, an ex- like she is by far the most important person in a lot of this, um, at least in the games and and some of the stuff I read about the books mm-hmm. uh, of banquets, bastards, and burial burials. And the caption says, "The law of surprise is how one repays." Uh, the next episode, bottled appetites, a fateful meeting, a bard is ma- a bard is maimed. Uh, rare species of the next one a hunt for a dragon is underway my guess is going to be the really expensive episode where they're going to watch him do that mm. uh, and also my guess is in that teaser that showed him being all gray looking and sick I'm guessing he's taking a potion so he can fight this dragon because when they take potions yeah. and stuff it actually decays their bodies Ew. so that's but they're able to get a boost at I, least in the like, that's how those so work it, you say it's sick 
it decays our body, but yet they get more power. Yeah, it, it's still it's still poisonous. It's it's a poison okay. to help them, but it's still like it doesn't decay their body. Like it makes them weaker. It's just you can't have too many, otherwise you over intoxicate. At least that's the mechanic in the game, and that's how the potions work in the game. Is it over time? If you take too many, you'll eventually die, or just like no, you, like, just that just one shot. Overdose? Okay. Yeah, See, I thought it was because like, the, their genetic code allows them to just like their you know superpower mm-hmm. type. Of I thought thing. it was kind of like a, a transformation. Of his like physical going body. super saiyan, yeah, in a sense. Kind I of can't thing. say that you're totally wrong because you say it's a decay, it's a sickness. Yet he makes gets more power, so it's like that's counterintuitive at that point. Like the potions again, you can it, just like anything, um, a, a, a poison itself in yeah. small doses is good for you. Okay. In large doses, it will kill you. So Vaccines. these are kind of like that. Don't trust them. Shut All the right. fuck up. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> Rare species, I said. Uh, before a fall, a return to before a kingdom is flamed. And last episode is much more. The Witcher family, as you all like to say. So, cool. That looks good. I'm excited. Especially the fact that That's they're, they're starting off real good. About a month? I think so. Interesting note to add. Yeah. Amazon hmm. renewed Lord's, Lord of the Rings for season two already. Yeah. Oh, shit. Really? And so it looks like Netflix and Prime will be going back and back. Like, they'll have a nice competition on their hands, the shows. Yeah. Do you guys think that because, so, and this is why I did it too, Lord of the Rings 1 and 2, like our um, Fellowship and Two Towers is on Netflix, and I rewatched them because oh, they yeah. were on Netflix. And I believe they brought them up recently. Like, I don't know how long they've no, had they've them. No, they've been there for a while. For a real long time. Yeah. Anyways, I'm guessing now, especially when it comes to The Office, they're looking at the streaming numbers and they're being like, people want this, which that's what the streaming numbers show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they probably renewed the second season for Lord of the Rings because of how many people are re-watching Fellowship or watching for the first time Fellowship yeah. and Two Towers on Netflix. And they're like, oh, damn, these numbers are actually going up. Yeah. That's an interesting game to play. It could also be, though, just due to the fact of how expensive this season will be. And they're probably like, you know what? Like, we want some like yeah. longevity out of this show. We're not going to like dump. It's like a stupid amount. Isn't it the most expensive show like ever made or on track to be? I don't know. Maybe. I, I heard it was like stupid expensive. Like, I for the MCU movie. shows were going to be. Well, that was after. So I don't know if that like statistic would change. Like, I remember like reading about it yeah. was when it first announced and they yeah. said that. Yeah. So MCU shows might have like. Because we still don't have a, a date for when the Lord of the Rings trailer is going to or series is supposed mm-hmm. to come out, right? How they like, even started filming? I don't. Pay I attention. think they've started filming. It's just no release time. Mm-hmm. But they haven't even locked down actors. actors. So, so I guess yeah, they just maybe haven't just, done anything. <laughs> they're they're most likely in in all sorts of pre post or pre production right now. Yeah, well, they, they, what probably happened then if they haven't actually casted anybody, they probably had a, too big of a story to put in such a small season. And they just, and decide, just stretching like, no, it out. Yeah, do two parts. So yeah, yeah, maybe it's a little bit shorter. But they so they have sixteen episodes worth. But they're going to split into eights, just like Witcher's going to do potentially. Um, yeah, and then they'll probably expand from whatever they find. They'll be like, hey, yeah. we can jump off from here and here and here. They, I know they've cast some people. Um, I can't remember who went on there. And is it actually main too? What is the show? Is it like the a retelling look, of the movies, no, or is no, it like no, no, totally no. different? No, it's uh, set in a different okay. age per se. Like it, it's most of these shows coming out that already has an established like movie series will kind of touch on a past event or a potentially future event. Most likely past because there's more lore mm-hmm. um, to you know. You have like even what the those Shadow of Mordor. Uh, games those aren't canon I don't think by any means but there are characters in there that are canon like Sauron mm-hmm. uh, any of the other elves in there kind of thing so there's storylines that are very massive back then so you could have the forming of the ring you could have how Sauron came to be because he was originally an, el- uh, an elf and still kind of is but whatever so it's actually a prequel series obviously yep. um, the rumor is swirling around is that it's going to center on a young Aragorn. Is that the main Really? Man? They would go that... That's what the rumors are talking about. Um, it will be filmed in New Zealand. Naturally. It's actually going to be taking place during the second age of Middle-earth. There you go. For reference, The Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings novel and film trilogy are set thousands of years after the second age, towards the end of the third age. The second age, on the other hand, is most notable for being the time period when Sauron created the one ring there you go so that and then so by that time Smeagol had come across the ring and had been lost forever for 2000 years so that's 
there's some there's some deep deep uh background that's going to happen on this so how they have it at thousands of years 2000 well it's 2000 years um prior to the before smeagol wow. finds the ring which is many years before okay so Bilbo. it can't it can't go around aragorn because aragorn he's like over 100 years old i don't know man so that doesn't make any sense that my I only don't thing know who is, this man is, so I have no input in this conversation. Have you not seen? Oh yeah, we, yeah, he hasn't seen him. Uh, Come Ma- on, man. Yeah, man, fucking watch them, dude. Dude, it feels you're like you're killing me, Smalls. Like, what the flying <laughs> fuck, man? Just watch them. It feels like such a big commitment to watch. It's them. not a big Ooh, commitment. It's oh three movies. God. Yeah, watching like, Game like three of Thrones. Hours. Get over yourself. It's, it's three hours. You can, you know, you don't have to watch them all at once, right? But I feel like I should. <laughs> no, just watch them. Uh, two hundred and fifty million dollars was the uh, the Lord of the Rings winning bid, uh, winning a bidding war eight. against Netflix. The number reported that was a sale. It caught. They bought it for two hundred fifty million. The whole series would end up costing more than a billion. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Mm. Peter Jackson's trilogy grossed two point nine billion worldwide, and the combined budget for all three films was two hundred eighty one million. Oh fuck! So much money. Yep. Um. But yeah, that's actually super exciting. Um, that's the production value of a TV series. Yeah, I think we'd have to I, we'd have to look more um, into who's actually being cast. For Did they the say fun. that they are slated to be released by like what end of twenty twenty, end of twenty twenty one? Nothing. I'm not sure. This is a big article, and they don't have it broken up pretty good. What about awesome. the cast? Um, I think someone from Game of Markella Thrones. Markella Kavanaugh is uh, yeah, yeah, Picnic yeah. from Canning, Hanning Rock is in talks for the series. I don't know who she is. Will Poulter from uh, Bandersnatch and Midsummer. There was that. No idea. Um, yeah. So, anyways, interesting. Super exciting. But yeah. Um, also, something super exciting, which I guess in the past like three, four episodes, I've kind of like written off as saying like I don't care anymore. I don't know what it is, man. Between the Mandalorian and fucking me playing Jedi Fallen Order, which is a lot of fun. Um, getting into it a little. I'm yeah. like fucking Star Wars, man. What the f-? like? There's th- something this is, there. This is this is what I must have missed for so long. Where it's like when you don't when you don't get invested in it for a while, you just don't give a shit. And now I'm just like because okay, so this isn't. I haven't finished yet. I fall in order, so there's no spoilers here. It's a really fun game. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple of frame rate drops here and there. A couple times when you go to like do you, to walk into an area, it loads, so it freezes, then loads, but it's never crashed on me. Um, story is moving really good. The progression is really good in the game. The fighting is really hard. I've never played Dark Dark Souls or Sekiro, but I heard everyone's comparing it to that. Um, there's, you know, there's no abilities gained from upgrading your lightsaber. And by upgrading, I mean you just get parts and you can make it look whichever way you want. But I still find myself doing it just because it looks cool and all the designs are really cool. Yeah. The worlds are cool. You bounce between four planets um, and they get bigger and bigger. Like this one, I thought like it took me maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes to walk through. And then the second time I go back, it fucking opens up like entirely. Hmm. It's a like there's a lot of them, uh, like a lot of air, like these these worlds just expand. And but they do it in a in a pretty cool way. Yeah. Um, Cal, the ca- the Cameron Monaghan who plays Cal mm-hmm. is really good in it. Um, BB. Eight, no, no, BB ten. <laughs> uh, yeah, he just calls. Oh, BB one. What am I the fuck am I talking about? BB one is his little droid, mm-hmm. cute as fucking hell. He's awesome. Um, the relationship is really good. Anyways, super fun game. If you haven't picked it up, I would highly recommend it. It's hard. Like I'm playing on Jedi Master, which is the hard mode, not the very hard mode. That's how I wanted to start it for some reason, and I'm I was getting my ass kicked. But eventually, you get really good. You get more abilities, force abilities, and all that. Um, and it's it's really really fun. Highly recommended. And the lore in it is awesome. Like you, your BB one goes and finds these areas, scans them, mm-hmm. and there's a history of it. And also oh. when you go to a planet, so I was on a Wookiee planet, Kashyyyk, mm-hmm. and there was a big battle. And there was there was parts. Let's say there was a bowl and something going on, and I would scan. I would use my Force Echo, mm-hmm. and it's almost like I can recall a recording of what happened there. And so it, it's like it, a Batman thing? Maybe. It, and it paints a story of mm-hmm. what happened in each part. Mm-hmm. But you don't get it all in one part. So I have right now, let's say in one section, parts 1, 7, and 10. And I've got bits of this story. Yeah. But then as I go further, I'm finding extra parts to it. It's it's That's very like well put together. Creed 2. Assassin's Creed 2 when they're trying to get the, um, he's trying to get the story of the Eden. Yeah, you know what? You're that's that's. 
pretty you, damn close. You're piecing together that storyline and what yeah. happened and stuff like that. So yeah. So in, in this case, you literally just go up and do that, as yeah. opposed to in Assassin's Creed Two, which is ten years old, by the way. Mm. I think it's like this past week or something. So uh, yeah, still one of my favorite games of all time. That one you have to do the puzzles. Okay. Yeah. But still, yeah. By the end of it, you've pieced together a lot of it, and you're like, oh fuck, this is sweet, right? Yeah. Anyways, long story short, really good, really fun, and I'm like, yeah, I'm deep into the Star Wars stuff right now, and like, you can just, you keep going back to the planets, because you can't, you haven't unlocked a certain ability to get you to the next part, Mm -hmm. so then as you learn something, you go back to the planet, and you get to explore more, and do more things, Mm -hmm. and the way they introduce some of the abilities that you think you would have had, is through something, so in one instance, something has happened in my main character, Mm -hmm. and he was recalling his training when he was a, a Padawan learner, when he was a young guy. Yeah. And so it's in this room with your master, and so you're learning how to do certain things, and then he it's almost like he remembers how to do it in that moment, mm-hmm. and then you do it in the game, and you're like, okay, that's sweet. Nice. But anyways, so with that, and then Lord of the Rings, which I hadn't really bothered for the longest time. Like I always thought that the trilogy is like one of the best trilogies ever, mm-hmm. um, but I just haven't seen it in so long, and yeah. now it's like, fuck. Love, like I remember why I love this. It's really weird though, because I also feel like the same thing for Star Wars. Because I genuinely didn't give a shit about this upcoming movie. Like honestly, did not care one little bit. Mm. And then I saw Doctor Sleep, and I saw the trailer for it. And this was like the first time I'd seen a trailer since the first one. Mm-hmm. And it was like stupidly good. Like it looked really good. Yeah. And then watching Mandalorian has me even more hyped to like yeah. watch the actual movie. Yeah. And yeah. I got Disney Plus now because I'm using my brother's login. Congrats. So I can like I saw all the Star Wars movies. Mm-hmm. So I'm like you know what? Like I'm probably gonna do like a whole watch through like leading up to seeing the ninth one. I honestly think it's the you last. Will, hey? It's the last yeah, Jedi effect kind of thing. It's what happened. Well, the last Jedi was everyone. Were you guys kind of excited about Force Awakens in a yes. way? Yes. Were you? Did no, you care? Not as much, man. Not as much. You as were excited else. for this it. Was the first one I saw in theaters, I was hyped. As I was excited for the fact that this franchise is, was going to come back just because okay. it's so huge, and it just helps th- movies like the, yeah. the culture in general. So, and then after seeing Last Jedi, for a lot of people, that's where it really everyone didn't like it. The storyline fell flat. There was a lot of you know dumb things done in it. Again, new director decided to do some stuff differently, and everyone's hating on him. Um, Zack Snyder. Let's not forget though. Again, all of the decisions he made, yeah, got passed, yeah, he, by everybody. So he like made the movie he wanted. He didn't yeah. say like this wasn't Warner Brothers fucking up the movie. Yeah. He like stood by his decisions. And, oh yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. But not only that, the higher ups approved of it. They yeah. fired Lord and Miller because of how jokey uh, Solo was going to be, mm-hmm. and those guys ended up winning an Oscar with Spider Man into the Spider Verse. And the remember that this Last Jedi movie got passed by everybody from yeah. the top. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sorry. But uh, again, now we're getting this last one. I think people are going to get excited again because JJ back in the back at the helm, which and again, should have happened. Which should have happened. Not, and that's on him. Mm-hmm. He didn't sign up for the trilogy because he didn't want to commit. And I'm like, no, you probably should have committed to the three. You could have done it on your terms and created what you wanted. But he was, the he was Star Wars trilogy. Why would you say no? Like, what? He did, he's doing a Star Trek movie. What's the, it's not like he doesn't like this kind of movie. Yeah, it's not like he's not a big fan of Star Wars. Just do the fucking trilogy. You do two or three. Ryan oh, Johnson sucks. That's news too. We'll what is it. Star Trek? Oh, the Star Trek thing. I don't care about Star Trek. I liked it. I still haven't seen the single Star Trek. Yeah, I, I think against that. I just, well, I, I've, I've only seen, seen the new stuff. I've seen Wrath of Khan, no, and I can't many. say that I didn't like it. I did enjoy it when I like, and yeah. I was young, and I thought it was pretty awesome. But like, I didn't watch anything leading up to it, so mm-hmm. there was a lot of stuff I had to like pick up from mm-hmm. you know everybody else that was around it. But yeah. Like, uh, what was that Star Trek stuff? Well, it basically, I think it's JJ again. I he think so. He, I he believe he's doing a, like a new one. He's doing a fourth one with the cast he had. Oh, okay. So Chris Pine and Zoe Saldana and all that stuff. Because I enjoyed all three of them that he created. Like a lot of people are kind of iffy about the last one, but I still liked all three of them. They're great and enjoyable to watch. So him back at the helm for the fourth one to create that Star Trek series. I'm pretty excited for, and I know Quentin Tarantino. He's still doing his right, supposedly. So he's might be doing a totally different storyline at the end it's of the so day. It's so weird. Wait, so Quentin Tarantino, this, would this count as his tenth movie? No, no. Okay. his tenth movie. This is, is this we is talked about it last movie. week, where he's going to be doing novels and plays, mm-hmm. and so his last movie, technically by his standards, because he considers Kill Bill one and two. Otherwise, Once Upon a Time would be his tenth. Oh, okay. Yeah, but he counts it as one, and it's, apparently, it's going to be a long time until that movie comes out. Yeah, because he only, again, like you said, he only counts the ones he writes. And, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like fully, like fully full, his. Okay. Fully his, 100%. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to say the title of this thing because it's so funny because we talked about Quentin Tarantino. So Nicolas Cage 
is going to play a Nicholas play himself in a movie where Nicholas Cage is desperate to work with Quentin Tarantino. That'd be hilarious. That sounds like everything I want to see in something <laughs> that I never even knew I ever wanted to see. That I is so like, crazy. I just like how there are actors like uh, Shia LaBeouf and Nick Cage that understand like that they're currently like jokes. Yeah, like they were both like I assume like they're both like respected actors like at a time. Like, Shia LaBeouf was uh, a Shia kid LaBeouf actor, was kind of a shining star, and then he kind of went off the rails, and he realizes that. Mm-hmm. That's the and thing. That's he's why fully... like they're doing movie. Like Shia LaBeouf isn't doing a comedy, but he's still doing like a story about no. his life. And, like, and the whole two. The, it's only it only came about because of the situation he was in. So now he's doing those art pieces, that, and I think it'll be his comeback with these two films. He has two coming out, correct? He had Honey Boy came out, and I think there's one more. Right, Honey Boy was about him, and the other one isn't. I don't think. I think yeah. it was the movie. He'll make a comeback. He's a good actor. Yeah, but Nick, I just like how like it sounds fun. It's like you know what? Like good for you. Like just yeah. It's a joke. Lean into it. Like you're a joke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. lean into it. Like, yeah. Like the uh, thing is, he's an Oscar-winning performer. Yeah. Like, he's he's he not can a act. complete joke. He's just a little off like the currency. Like he's just a big meme. Like yeah, he's like sure. Steve Buscemi and like what's his name? The, who's a tiny guy who played the penguin? Rob and, Snyder. Oh no, no. Danny, uh, DeVito. Danny DeVito. Danny yeah. DeVito. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. But this is the synopsis. So it's called "The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent." Oh well. The meta movie will follow Nick Cage with a frantic goal to be in Quentin Tarantino's next movie as he is faced with a mountain of debt and troubled relationship with his teen daughter. Oh, and it gets better. This is from, uh, I forget who this is. Apparently, the actor will talk to an egotistical 90s version of himself who tears him down for recent dumb movie choices, which is fucking hilarious. He resorts to making a birthday appearance at a Mexican billionaire who is a massive fan of his. Uh, after the pair bond, he uh, the CIA pulls Cage aside to inform him the billionaire is really a kingpin. Um and then things heat up with his wife and all that stuff. I don't know, I think it just sounds fucking that's hilarious. Is yeah. that like greenlit? Like that's happening? Or yeah. is that like just a pitch? This seems like this is this is what's in the works right now. I'm excited. I'm genuinely excited that's to see this. That's really funny. Yeah. That's going to be really funny, I think. <laughs> I don't know any um, way to segue out of that one. But yeah, just, uh, Joker funny. hits a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. We can talk about that, which is awesome. Well, we talked about this last week. We, we I, talked about honestly, it being the, the money thing keeps coming up, and I'm like, oh, I'm over it. I fine. They made the money. That's great. Yeah. Good for them. But it's now the most profitable movie without China's numbers. Cool. Which are profitable, our R rated movie without its numbers. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah. But then it'll lead into the fact that this whole week everyone's been saying that there's a sequel, and yet there isn't a sequel. Yeah. So, and I think you were because your response to that was. Let's let's see what little Anthony's response was. To Am I going to exposed? Probably no. Maybe I haven't decided yet. I think I was the first one though that said it wasn't happening. You said I think you sent an article. Oh, I sent the photo. The article yeah. said likely to return, and then you said, "Huh, he's likely to return." And then I said, "Well, it's not confirmed, so that's why they say likely." Well, I just assumed it meant like likely to return meant like it wasn't like they were going to go on with the movie without like Todd Phillips. Oh no, they still haven't even grilling, like they still haven't gone through the, the the movie, but they're wanting to because it made a billion dollars off very little money, so I'm not surprised. Um but then finally Todd Phillips because this is really the only one that matters. Um Todd Phillips finally said that it's really not happening. He says, "I can honestly say to you there was no meeting that ever happened on October 7th where I marched in, Phillips said. First of all, if you know me in my career, uh, where I marched in, whatever. He says, first of all, if you know me in my career, that's not my style. I made a huge comedy at Warner Bros. The Hangover. I didn't suddenly become a comedy factory producer like, oh, let's just churn out movies. Kind of did. Bradley Cooper and I have a production company at Warner's. I've been at Warner's for 15 to 16 years. We have two things in development at all times, not 40 things like some people. I'm not the kind of guy who goes marching in saying i want these 40 titles i just don't have the energy here's the real truth about the sequel while joaquin and i have talked about it and while touring the tour the world with warner bros executives going to toronto venice and other places of course we're sitting at dinner and they're saying so have you thought about this but talking about contracts there is not a contract for us to even write a sequel we've never approached joaquin to be in a sequel will that happen again i just think the article was anti anticipatory anticipatory sorry fucking can't speak can't anticipatory at best and so yeah that's that that's all we have yeah that's so the, just that's you the know legit classic truth. uh media sites are clickbaiting dc shit yeah, yeah. For, no not dc shit just clickbaiting stuff what is it with you in thinking that dc is, is the victim oh my god get over yourself Anthony, <laughs> shut up, <laughs> shut, up Meg. shut up meg 
<laughs> Don't start turning into the Meg. You're wearing a toque. He's actually the Meg of this episode. Ooh. Maybe I should just call this episode the Meg. No, really and then Snodica. everyone's going to know that you are the Meg. He's got the glasses. Well, did you, say you, Didn't you roll in here called in the a Meg, pink sweater? Because there's a movie no, about the Meg. I thought you had a pink sweater. You can still call it the Meg. You can just call it Meg. Shut up, Meg. Meg. Actually, shut up, Meg would make more sense. Yeah. Okay. We'll call it Shut Up, Meg. Shut up, Meg. Shut up, Zaddy. Um, Zack Snyder. Anyways, Meg. so yeah, Meg. don't look at all the titles. You've heard it here for the 50th time at the F word. Um, but this does open up the uh, the thing that I really want to see the DC Black label that he pitched when he pitched Joker. Mm-hmm. I think that would be awesome. Cool. cool. Black label just like seems like the next logical step for DC. Like if they're going to do more solo movies, which I don't care. Like I'd rather see them try and develop a you universe. Sure you don't care. <laughs> no, I'd rather see them develop a universe first. Like honestly, DCEU like would be my more like top priority just to see them actually like do that right because they can do solo movies. They've done it for years. They just fucked up and like whatever. So it happens when you try to do an Avengers style movie in like second well, day. <laughs> that's what happens when you try to do something that you weren't planning on doing mm-hmm. just to catch up. Yep. Mm-hmm. And and you're and you're playing in somebody else's sandbox. And then Playing your the own sandbox. So was it four films before the group one came together? Man of Steel, BBS, so. Suicide Squad, Justice League. So, or Wonder Woman came before Justice League. One of the two. See, I don't even count BBS because is that meant why would to be? You not count BBS because it's I? a it has all three of them in it. So it's already a team up movie. Yeah. Technically, the first BVS is the team up movie. Yeah, it's Dawn of Justice. It was there to set up the Justice League. Ooh. Right, but Iron Man had Iron Man. Then Iron, or, sorry, the Avengers had Iron Man. I'm Iron not defending Man 2, this point. I'm just stating know. why I'm, it's, but it's different. You're trying to say that the this like that they had all these movies beforehand, but they didn't because BVS was no, actually I was just, like three stating people. the order. Yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying is that like at, they had solo acts before they came out with the Avengers. The only closest thing was Black Widow being in Iron Man two, and um, Hawkeye being in Thor. But those were very minor roles, except for Scarlett Johansson. Like, she had a pretty prominent role in Iron Man 2. But they still had all these movies. Then they had the team up. Like we've talked about before, BVS just decided to shove everyone in BVS, except for Man of Steel. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the difference. No. Uh-huh. Um, but anyways, I think the Black D, uh, black DC label. Black or whatever it's going to call it. Whatever Isn't it Black Label? D- no, black Label, black. whatever. Sure. I think all of that would be unreal. And mm-hmm. I think less about connecting the dots. And more about just make individual anthology movies that are of the same caliber mm-hmm. of artistry as Joker. I just think, honestly, like, just finish what the fuck you started. No. Just finish. No, not need the, the DC Universe. Like, finish you're going to do what, this? though? Just do, like... What do they start? Anything. Like, no, do, DC Universe like is what you're Steel. talking about. That's DC Universe, yeah. though. Yeah, but Man of Steel, like... Just, like, I'm just saying. That happened years you're, ago. You're Focus. talking about finish... Yeah, finish what you started. DCU. Mm-hmm. That's it's what they're done. trying to start. So yeah. that's what you're saying. They should just restart it. No. Yes. It's, it's too done. soon. No. no one cares. None of the actors. I don't even care. Except Listen, for Manus. They, they can retcon the whole Justice League thing as far as we're concerned. I don't care. They'll just make this Snyder Cut canon. But, but that's not going to do anything because everyone's going to be like, oh, we got to go back and watch five extra minutes of this one movie that's supposedly going to change the whole course of the, the movies. No, it's not going to happen. You just wait. <sighs> I don't think that this release the Snyder Cut thing is A, going to happen, and B, going to make as much of an impact as you think. I think it's going to be a case of they release it, people are going to be like, oh, there's like 20 minutes extra of stuff, and then No, that's the it. movie, his cut was four hours long. Okay, but how much of a difference from the original movie do you think there's actually going to be? And I have it could no, actually, nobody knows. It could actually ruin it, because then you've got, what, an extra hour and a half then of stuff? Well, I don't think that, it's going to be, just said it was his was four hours i don't think he's gonna release a four hour cut of a movie he okay should. so then it reverts back to what i said same length with this scene moved here that scene moved here and maybe an extra two minutes taped on to all these other things what the justice league we got because i see we're just talking about this now yeah the justice league yeah, we right got now. <laughs> like they said half the movie was just reshoots half the movie you saw uh-huh. was not his sure so it's not just they didn't just reshoot the same scenes he did to get a different shot they changed dialogue they made it more jokey which is why Ben Affleck, our surprise, retweeted it because he was—I knew he was very displeased with the fact they made Batman like such a not a joke, but more comedic. He wasn't really funny though. Well, he tried to be. There were like things like when he, he was Superman, Superman was fighting or something, and like he said something like, 
I forget what he said, but it was really stupid where he's kind of like being a bitch, even though he just beat the fuck out of him like two years ago. Yeah, but it seemed like Ben Affleck could give two shits to be in that movie, even in the scenes that Snyder would have shot anyways. Yeah. That doesn't matter. That's all hypothetical. No, no, that, that does matter. When you can tell that nobody cares, like Jennifer so Lawrence. So if Ben Affleck scene, didn't care, though, yeah, why would he retweet it? I don't know. Probably to be jump on the bandwagon. What bandwagon? What would he gain from it? Nothing. It's just exactly. for he's he's got nothing. He hasn't had but anything have, for a while. He doesn't have to while. gain anything. He can just do it as support, regardless. Yeah. Why, yeah, why, why does he have He was still part of it, though. But Henry Cavill yeah. never did it. Doesn't matter. He it's doesn't want different. to. Different. Yeah, exactly. Why would Ben... See, I'm just saying... Because he wanted to. Ben Affleck, though, tweeting it is an important thing. It's not just to say that he didn't care to be in the movie. Him doing that, showing his support mm-hmm. for his cut, the movie he filmed, the movie he signed on to do, is showing that he's supporting this movie. So if Ben Affleck is supporting this movie, he's a respected actor. He's not going to throw his name he's on this kind petition. Of a dick. He could be a dick. I don't care about his personal life. He could. I don't know. I don't know him personally. I don't know what he's done. That's professional, actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I don't care about his personal life. How he acts in his personal life. No, right, it's ahead, his professional. Just go. Just go. Just go. It doesn't Wait. matter professionally. So I'm just saying he has nothing to gain from this. This is where he's. This is where he likes to pick and choose what he wants, and it yeah, doesn't actually yeah, go, yeah. Ahead. Okay, go, go ahead. ahead. This go doesn't ahead. make sense. No, it doesn't. He doesn't have anything to gain from this he saw the movie you claimed he didn't care about the movie i don't care no, what no, you no. said i'm not gonna hold it against he you. didn't care on screen like he couldn't mm-hmm. he could care less to be in there he was phoning it in well, that's what it the reshoots like. though he didn't reshoot the whole movie it was a very large portion of the movie they reshot if he shot half of it guess what there's another half exactly the entirety of the movie he phoned in Ergo, it doesn't matter because he phoned it in the entire time. So well, why would it matter? One version. You said that they cut half. There's an entire half. So let's take that extra half. But the half was just approximate. Like, I don't understand the exact scenes. So why are you now fighting the fact that the entire movie, he was phoning it in on screen? I don't and remember you're saying, the entire movie. I, I do. Because I recently I watched it with Soph. Why? Because she hasn't seen it. Yeah, good. Tell her to wait. She saw it. For what? This hypothetical Snyder cut that's never going to come out? And ba- and and sorry, by the way, your Ben Affleck argument falls apart because he decided to wait till after everybody else has been saying release the Snyder exactly. cut. Exactly. Why would he no, wait no, no. so long to do it? At that point, it was dead. Because he's a bandwagon jumper and has nothing better to do. That's why. If you're going to really support this movie that, oh, I put my heart and soul into it and I really want to see it or whatever, you'd be first. But he wasn't. He waited until everybody else did, and then he's like sending out a tweet with seven characters, and you think that is like him going in the front line? What else do you need to do? Nothing. But I'm saying... I just don't understand your argument in no, this no, case. No, you're, no, you're arguing that it means something. I'm saying it doesn't mean anything, and he's just doing it so he can be in the limelight, because after that happened, every... Tom, Dick, and Harry decided to write an article that Ben Affleck is now supporting the Snyder Cut after everybody else did. Mm -hmm. And he was Batman in the Snyder Cut. So he's doing it for clout. I don't even think he gives a fuck because he didn't give a fuck filming that movie just based on his performance alone. Like Jennifer Lawrence in the X-Men movies after Days of Future Past could give a fuck. So that's why your whole argument actually collapses on itself because you're picking and choosing how much time the Snyder Cut actually was, because you don't even know. You're saying it's half of that. You're saying it's the whole thing. You're saying it doesn't matter. When did I say it was the whole thing? What I'm saying is you're thinking that this Snyder Cut and everyone's thinking that the Snyder Cut, just because Aquaman stabbed what's his nuts in the fucking asshole, that it's actually going to matter. And none of it matters. That's why Henry Cavill's probably not doing it, because he's like, what's the point? Hmm. Well, Henry Cavill doesn't need to. Okay, so why would Ben Affleck? Exactly, he doesn't need to either. So That's the why exact you, purpose why, of this thing. Why are you putting emphasis on it yourself? Because he didn't need... Ben Affleck... Well, again, you're saying because he away. didn't need to, the fact that he did mean something? Yes. No, I think the exact opposite. He didn't need to, he shouldn't have, and the fact that he did means nothing. We'll see. I don't think it's going to get released. And it's going to get released. Gonna make, I don't think it's going to make a difference either. It's going to get released. And it's going to be... Vass, what do you have? I don't care anymore. <laughs> How could you not care? This is the most important thing. Not even that close. Has happened this, this is week. it's, this it's is the all least listen. Important thing. Joker hitting it's a billion good. is listen, important. Listen, it just doesn't matter. Ben Affleck should have supported, regardless. Just go behind the cast with the foul. Gal Gadot did it already. Uh, Ezra Miller already did it, probably. No, no. So they should all just support it and just say, "Yeah, let's release the Snyder Cut." Who gives a shit? They should all get behind it. Doesn't matter if they're if they have anything to gain with it. Doesn't matter. 
they're just going to go support bandwagon or not. It has nothing to do with that. It's just more of just support the fact that, okay, people want this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to support them too. So That's all that matters. Do you have a release the Snyder Cut banner in the corner of your room that you pray to every night? Why would I pray to it? Well, I don't know because it seems like you, it's very important At the end you. of the day, why would you not want the Snyder Cut to get released? Just give me a solid reason why you're against the Snyder Cut. Because Batman versus Superman sucked and okay. the entire Justice League, Batman didn't care to even be on screen. That's Are you enough. tired of people bitching about the Snyder Cut? No. Are you t- you're not tired about hearing it? It's, no, all, it's actually care. new news more than anything. Yeah, it's not actually, really. It's, it's been happening for two years. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's, it's coming only back just now. gotten traction before well, it's just did snippets here and there. They planned a one day to all like tweet it. Well, there you what go. I don't like is that you're making victims of really rich people. I don't think so. I'm just saying I want to see a movie. I don't no, care. No, no, but you you make it seem like it's it's an actual super important thing for you that they release a Snyder Cut and because these rich actors are saying it, it means something. It doesn't mean anything. These guys, well, these guys just chase clout wherever they can find it. It's, it Leonardo it's, DiCaprio has been jerking off all over water conservation for years. Why does that matter? Why are people care so much that some rich guy's doing that? They're just getting behind something because they think they're because like, they're I'm important and I can do it. So that's all it is with Ben Affleck with this Snyder Cut. Here's the thing, though: if they if they truly believe that the cut that got released wasn't the true form of what the movie was, and the release that, or the, like again, the Snyder Cut is the one that should have, mm-hmm. then they're going to go behind it. It's the same thing like if people said release the, not the the original Game of Thrones season eight scripts and release that, or like if they shot that stuff and then they just didn't do it, mm-hmm. there could be a campaign for that too. You just want the best product to be out there. So if there seems to be that clout and that traction behind it, then hey, why not? At the end of the day, why now? It doesn't matter. I don't know. It shouldn't matter to anybody who doesn't care for the Snyder Cut, who doesn't like the Snyder Cut, who doesn't like. No one's like seen the, it, so they can't say they didn't. But there are people that still like don't like it. Yeah. They, they don't, don't like want the to campaign. Happen. Yeah. At the end of the day, you should just support it. Not even support it. You should just accept it. Say, okay, I'm tired of hearing all these DC fans bitching for two years. Mm-hmm. Just release the movie. At the end of the day, this was fucking trending like it blew up it wasn't just a couple hand felt like handful of tweets mm-hmm. and that was it it was like i don't know the exact numbers but it was actually like a surprisingly high amount millions. of like trending yeah. yeah i don't think i don't know if it was millions i think it was just underneath like a million like oh, okay. trending tweets or whatever oh, yeah snyder cut is important it should happen ben affleck i feel like you put a lot of emphasis on that i, I think it's just interesting i think i think you put more emphasis on to it. restate what i said i think it's just interesting because again he has nothing to gain from it yeah. he's backed away he's already shown he doesn't care or he's not that he doesn't care maybe he's just more disappointed with bvs the reaction and then with the whole mess of justice league behind the scene bullshit yeah maybe it transferred on the screen more than we know or less than we know at the end of the day this is all speculation and bullshit yeah and we will not know until you le- they till they release this fucking movie mm-hmm. what they should just do because, I mean, what are they going to lose? Like, generally, what are you going to lose from releasing this movie? Nothing. That you're fucking clowns for either Snyder Cut people. I can get fucking flamed. And I'm well aware of this fact. If this movie sucks ass mm-hmm. and is somehow worse than the original, <laughs> that's the only that's the only negative impact. The movie's done. Snyder says he's finished it himself. Yeah. All you have to do is fucking release it. Yeah. You won't have to put that much marketing into it. Like, it's going to fucking market itself. You should just leak it like Ryan Reynolds did. That's what they should do. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can you imagine? The only issue is one man has it. So if it gets leaked, it's not going to be hard to find out who the fuck leaked it. Who has it? Snyder himself. No. Uh, That's it. To close this point, one thing to correct you on, Ben Affleck is known as a dick in his professional career, not his personal. So he kept saying, you don't care what he does as a professional. Yeah, we don't know. Or his personal. It doesn't matter. He's not known in his personal life as a dick. Mm, Not necessarily. Because you'd be a totally different person in personal versus so your business life. So how is he a life. dick? Like, not even to like, question you, just genuinely asking, like, why is he known as a dick professionally? It's difficult to work with. And he's a left-wing nut. He's com- I've seen him in interviews, and he's, like, completely irrational when he talks about, like, anything that of some substance. And all of these guys, just like I said, Leonardo DiCaprio, like, all of that. Oh, what's wrong with the thing? Oh, the card's full. Uh-oh. Anyways, do you want to turn it off? Um... There you go. All of these guys are actors. They have to say certain things a certain way, and if they don't, they get burned. And it all depends on which which side Hollywood is leaning on. And so they all go behind that. 
And they're all like, okay, this is what you're supposed to say. If you don't say this, you're going to get burned. If you say this, you're going to get burned. So these guys pick the one side that the loud minority wants them to say, the ones that will scream, and that's the side they pick. That's why there's no weight to what they say, at least for me, because they're they're acting in real life. That's the show. So I was going to like, this is kind of a segue, so I don't know if you, I'm not going to segue into it yet. But you just said you were going to segue. Well, I said I don't want because you guys want to continue this conversation. Whatever, it's, kind, it's the same line. I started watching Chappelle's show yesterday. So yeah, good. Awesome. And it's like, first of all, weird because I didn't know there was that meme of like, fuck him. Well, like, why? Because fuck him. That's why. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had no idea that was Dave Chappelle. Like, he is like. He's, uh, he, like, he's a trend center, man. Welcome to pop copy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I can see it now. I can see. Okay. Like, he, for some reason, I thought he was much like more overweight. Because looking at him like as a young per- younger person, oh, but like looking, crying. he's like actually like nah, he's actually like he's pretty, super real thin man. Yeah, he's pretty yeah. like mediocre, like not mediocre, just like average build. Mm. But it's just like the KKK, the blind KKK. Oh, that was yeah. so the black I, white I, supremacist. Yeah. Was I one saw of the funniest then, like, things. Uh, the Negan special for like they had all his personas getting like batted by Negan. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the blind KKK leader, and everybody was talking. I think you probably mentioned it because I think it was on the show and I talked about it, and it was just so. Fuck it. When they were on the truck and they were banging on it and he comes out, where is that goddamn blank (laughs) banging on my truck like that? Oh, dude, it's so good. Clayton Bigsby. What a fucking character. I have a question, though. I don't know if this is too off topic. Why did he leave? Like, what happened where he left? Like, everything. There's a lot of stuff surrounding that. One of them was that he didn't like the way that his stuff was being used in the culture and, like, within people. Mm -hmm. Like, um negatively people he like, felt that some people were taking what he was doing and using it in ways that he didn't want them to use but mm-hmm. you know it's a tough thing also i think there was a like he walked away from a fuck ton of money mm-hmm. but i think a lot of it had to do also with um the way that comedy central was now bearing down on the show itself yeah also it was a whole mix of stuff but he ended up fucking off going to africa now he's back and yeah he's there was a season spell. without him that uh the lost episodes the lost episode with uh wayne brady yeah wayne was brady hosting. and charlie murphy were hosting i think he, well, did yeah. it have skits of him because yeah, it, yeah, it was still yeah it was still it was like it was the lost episodes it wasn't very many but it was hosted by these other guys yeah. instead but it's still the Chappelle show it's like it's he was already gone okay see you later these were all stuff that they filmed they yeah. did but they never released yeah. for the first two seasons yeah. and it was yeah it, it, was it the first two seasons or was there's it, only two it was two seasons but the lost episodes yeah. were stuff that they filmed during those first two Ooh. where else would they have gotten them from I don't know it would have been the season three technically no they they would have it would have they've said it stuff that we did during because my I guess is out of all the stuff that time. we saw yeah they probably filmed like 10 times more stuff oh for sure that yeah. they again didn't release that's yeah. why they did the lost episodes and then they picked from those ones or whatever yeah. but yeah no um that show is one of those defining moments in history that changed everything for mm-hmm. a lot of people uh, and like just the way that you know these where we look at these things and yeah. it just yeah the cultural impact is through the roof I just, I don't know what it is. His show's funny. I just his stand up, though. Like, I've been watching his stand up clips, too, and they're just yeah. like, I find it way more, like, enjoyable just because it's so, like, I guess more like today is more modernized and shit like that. And it's just like, He's just I guess I don't know much of his modern shit. Like, I knew yeah. some of his characters, like, previously, but. Yeah, well, when you grow up the with, with it, the man. Chappelle show, it's totally different. Like, his, his we specials are just. Huh? We were in high school. Yeah, high school and for Killing that. Killing Him Softly came out before that. That's one of the oh, best stand ups yeah. you'll ever listen to. is Dave Chappelle's Killing Him Softly. Is that even on Netflix yet? No. No. No, no, no. I don't think they're going to put it on Netflix. No? Okay. You have to look for it. Like, you can probably YouTube. find it somewhere. YouTube for sure. I will yeah. check Plex. Oh, my God. It's so good. It, yeah. Like, still to this day, it's got some of the funniest fucking shit you'll ever hear. Oh, it's so yeah. good. But at least uh, now watching the Chappelle show, you might get a little bit more of his comedy yeah. going forward and why he does. Like, I mean, his first two specials that he did were... Uh, more on life than anything. Yeah, it was his and return. His return, yeah. And then this last one was probably more, a little bit sort of back to his roots in a this way. This is that. That's why when I was like, no, if you if you don't know who Dave Chappelle is, yeah. then you guys are fucked, and you guys shouldn't be speaking to him at all because <laughs> you don't know. Yeah. Um, I found it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead. I found it funny how you mentioned like growing up with the Chappelle show because he mentioned it on one of his stand ups I was watching on Netflix saying yeah. like talking about how Keen Peel like stole his show and like. Just doing the same shit he did. Yeah, and I used to. I watched like a bit here and there until my parents would yell at me because it was just you know inappropriate for a yeah. kid might be watching. Sure. And yeah. I was like, not that they blatantly like ripped him off because like no, it's they a basic just, idea, but like still it's a sketch like, okay, comedy, yeah, you right? Say, yeah. You can say that Chappelle might have taken the 
the format from yeah. SNL or from Mad TV or In Living yeah. Color or whatever. Like these these things have been around for a really long time, but he just revolutionized and changed the game on them. I would, and that's what yeah. Keen Peel would have gotten there. See, and I see Keen Peel is actually a toned down version of Chappelle. For oh, sure. It's 100% a toned down yeah, version yeah, of like, Chappelle. <laughs> not even close to where he hits and it's like, oh, not shit. Not even yeah. close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, well, that's cool that you're watching it, though. Mm-hmm. That's that's really cool. Uh, Daniel Craig says, no time to die. As I said in the opening, it's his last one. No shit. I think um, he said this many times. Well, last time people took it out of context. Yeah, because he was just off of doing, what was the last one called? Uh, Specter, Specter, oh, Skyfall Spectre. was the one before that. Yeah, um, he was he was just physically and mentally drained from it, and then already they wanted him to do another. He's like, no, screw yeah. you guys, I'm not doing this again. Yeah. And maybe it was the most difficult one he had to do for some reason. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but quite honestly, in my opinion, since the time of Sean Connery, he's been the most successful Bond. Like Sean Connery yeah. was the trendsetter, and then you got Daniel Craig now, who kind of changed the game in making an overarching story of a James Bond film. And right. so I think they they did too much in Spectre where they tried to tie everything together. I think that was a downfall for Spectre for me. Yeah. I didn't care for it too much. Okay. Um I think they just needed to to have the overarching Bond character going through stuff. Mhm. Just like they went from one to Spectre. Yeah. Cuz Quantum of Solace was yeah, but at least it added to his character towards Spectre. Mm-hmm. Where at, sorry, towards Skyfall. Yeah. Whereas Spectre Really was been like, no, this guy and this guy and this guy. We're all under one branch. Mm-hmm. Like, it's all because of this. And it's like, this is your destiny or whatever the fuck. Yeah. I felt that was a stretch. Um, so I'm hoping that this one yes is Yes and no be... a stretch because they did build it up to that point. Like, they, they've throughout the, all the movies eventually led to that point. From from meeting Vesper to Mr. White. Was his name Mr. White? I think so. Yo, Mr. White. Yo, Mr. White. <laughs> it's um, weird how both of you can do that at- you like accents? It? I don't say accent, but no, voice, voice, voice well. Yeah, you know? yo, Mister White. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so they built it from Casino Royale. No, just because they inherently had movies that happened to tie together, they didn't build to Spectre. They didn't. They didn't. You if they think? no, if they would have that organization you, built up to being part of Spectre, and you only found that out in Spectre. If they want, no, if they wanted to build it, imagine if we get to. Avengers Infinity War and they just introduced the Infinity Stones there and then you're like oh it's all tied together yeah but they never mentioned them once and we show up to Infinity War and these now matter more than ever if they had no end credit scene if they didn't mention Thanos if they didn't do anything and they're like wait a minute all these were an uh, overarching story but they didn't decide to tell us about it so if it was a legitimate thing then that at least that logo mm-hmm. would have shown up. The only thing we had is was from at least in my opinion was from um, from Casino Royale to Quantum of Solace, where it ended with that Mister White guy who was there at the casino, mm-hmm. who was the boss who killed Le Chiffre, and and then they had that chase scene afterwards. Mm-hmm. But if they would have had that octopus thing mm-hmm. peppered throughout the first few, then I would say yes, totally. We now get to see this shadowy organization because Skyfall had nothing to do with it. No, Skyfall actually was probably more, it was a skip because it was more about his family life more than anything. Yeah, but you'd think that they'd throw the family life thing after a run-in with Spectre Mm. when he would have to go back to his roots to be able to rise up again and go against the evil organization that's been throwing shit at him the whole time. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying I don't, like, I just think that they came up with this idea. No, not at all, because... It was never alluded to. And just like nobody would buy Infinity War if they never mentioned the stones once, Thanos once, a gauntlet once. Clearly that'd be a big fail anyway. But it's the same thing, different scale, and it actually would have been worse in Avengers thing because then it's like, well, we got like fucking 20 movies and you guys didn't even bother to mention your main goal. But which would then lead us to believe that they had no idea until they're like, oh, let's just throw Thanos in here and tie everything together. Nah. A stretch. So are all 007 films supposed to be somewhat connected, or is it just like in, in that's what they were? So the, yeah, this line. As soon as Daniel Craig took on Casino Royale, it was kind of like a reboot in a way. But reboot. But at the end of the all the all the other Bond films were kind of their own standalones. Even with the same Bond character, yeah. all you got to transferred over were the actual characters themselves, not the story. So Casino Royale, Quantum, Skyfall, Spectre, all 
coalesce together for the most part. Uh, not Good only not only with the characters, but there's a, some underlying story in some way, shape, or form. And again, the organization we saw that Mr. White was a part of was an under underling of the Spectre thing. So yes, we never saw that, and it would have been nice if there's an Easter egg somewhere, and if you look back at Casino, maybe there's an Easter egg that we missed, but probably not. And I could be totally wrong, and there might yeah. be, but... But yeah. if they did it like that, and let's say for the argument's sake that, yes, there is a Spectre symbol somewhere kicking around in there, then then it's, it's a nice co- uh, overarching story that works. I will eat my words if that's the case. I, I doubt. I feel like somebody would have found it by now. It's well, been out for a while. you know, like, I haven't really searched. There's probably somebody that did again. Something. They could they could elude Inspector. Oh, we've been seeing this symbol pop up everywhere. And now we kind of have an idea where it's coming from. And yes, it comes up in only one film, but it it, it affects where everything else came from. But it's call, call it a crutch, call it whatever you want to say. It's like oh, we're gonna use this as a as to tie everything together, just so you know. Right, and yeah. it's just again, it's it's the. Um, it's the Sherlock Holmes issue with the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes. Mm-hmm. They're fine, except for the fact that you're not actually following along with it. At the yeah. very end of the movie, he he devises, he mm-hmm. puts together the entire story, and you're like, oh, we didn't know any of this. Yeah. Thanks for telling us now, and so yeah. that you can pretend to, that you're the smartest person in the world. It's like, at least the BBC one. It, you, you follow, follow along. Like, you're you're I, on the path, I feel and that a payoff. form is kind of a split it'll split the fan base at the point where like they don't mind that it'll it's kind of like how saw saw does that to you 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 find out all the connections and all the things and what they could have done at the end so i i love the saw movies so that's where i do do. they're all great in my opinion all great sorry that's bold statement but they're all good i I enjoy all enjoyable exactly and that's all hey well, do. again, it does the same. It does the same thing. You go through. You follow these characters doing this, this, and this, and then he explains what you should have done, how you could have got out of it, and it was a lot easier than you thought. But y'all messed it up because you're terrible human beings. But I think it's more like it works more in Saw than it would in Sherlock Holmes, just due to the fact that he's more uh, taunting them, like saying yeah, this is how you could have done it. Like, and there's seven. Movies. I'm just saying it's it's that effect. It's mm-hmm. the same thing. You're explaining your story after the fact and how you got to that. Uh, final point um so i don't know that's how i looked at it and again it splits the fan base at that point where how, if people like it or they don't in that form so um i brought i guess since we brought up the term bbc this will be all right i, I watched a show on netflix called criminal uk okay and it's actually I've a of series of shows and so there's a criminal Ber- uh, berlin i think there's a, a, a criminal in france or whatever mm-hmm. it's really interesting it stars Haley Atwood, who plays Peggy Carter. Oh, nice. Uh, David Tennant. Nice. Um, And then I forget who the third guy is, but I recognize him. I just forget who it is. And it's only three episodes. Okay. And it's set in a... uh, It's in a police station where this new form task force breaks down people in the sense that, like, they have them in the the investigation room. The whole... Interrogation. Interrogation room. It is... Really well written. It's mm-hmm. really well done. And I'm like, fuck, like... BBC super... does a great job. But, like, no, like, all three episodes are different. They're not the same story. And they if... all wrap up whatever they're wrapping up by yeah. the end of that episode. Well, it's and fine, it's yeah. all individual. But, like, I, I highly recommend people watch the UK one and then go watch the other ones. Is Are they're they good. all connected? Or is no. It just... okay. okay, okay. I was going to say the, the only the thing actors... that connects them are the Name. actual um, police officers, the interrogators, who are, the same are nobody? They're all the same actors throughout. Okay, it's a it's like a reverse thing, okay. where it's not the focus of the biggest actor in the room, who in yeah. this case is David Tennant and Haley Atwood. I again, I, Atwell, sorry, I forget who the third guy is. Like I said, I've seen him before. But anyways, mm-hmm. highly recommended. Um, and then before we get to the Mandalorian, because we will obviously get that. Um, no, that's it. Mandalorian episode three. Oh, sorry, Disney Plus. If you're wondering why you haven't seen some of your shit on there that you want to see, like Thor Ragnarok, for instance. There is an exclusive agreement clause that they have that Disney has with these other streaming companies. So, until they've expired, so Thor Ragnarok I think is leaving in December mm-hmm. or whatever, yeah. and Thor One is coming to Netflix. You said, so oh, they, Thor One's going yeah, to Netflix December. Yeah. So Thor, the first one, won't be on Disney Plus because they have an exclusive agreement that they've made with Netflix a while back. Yeah, and they would have had it for years. Like yeah. we're like, okay, we're rolling this out. So if you're wondering why they're not on there, it's because their contract has not run up 
in the all standing other... contracts are going to be until then. Yeah. So they're honoring that shit. Nice. And now we can get to the Mandalorian episode three, mm-hmm. the sin. Mm-hmm. You're super excited. Go. Well, Honestly, wait, 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 real quick. Just sorry. I don't. Want, I'll, this is all no, I have to say. This is ahead. the only like. Did you watch smart? it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if I'm reading into this and just trying to be like not. I don't want to say trying to be smart or just like picking up on something that they okay. didn't intend. Yeah. But they call the chapter the sin. Yeah. And like Mando, who is like that's what we're calling him. That's his name, the Mandalorian guy. So the, they're calling him Mando because he's a Mandalorian. Okay. Well, Ma- the Mandalorian uh, betrays Baby Yoda, gets silver in return, and then all like, immediately feels like the guilt, and then it goes mm. chapter three, the sin. Yeah. And I was thinking like Judas, like the Judas effect, where he wow. like Judas got silver yeah. in return. I believe Judas felt like he felt yeah, like shit totally. after. Hundred percent. Right? Yeah. He tried to give the silver mm-hmm. back so and he then killed himself. Mando went back and actually like yeah. righted his wrong, and that was oh it. yeah, yeah. Except in this case, Judas. When he tried to, they fucking yeah they said no. That's wow, money. good for you. Yeah, literally, I threw that's really that. interesting. Oh. Not even for religious, just that connection. And it's episode three. And was it Paul that denied three times, or yes, was it was. Judas? It was Paul. Some that doesn't connect. Sorry. Anyways, wow, that's very interesting. Yeah. So Stop he Judas, he Judas the baby Yoda, mm-hmm. which I'm pretty sure it's not baby Yoda. It's I don't know is what the it, name well, is. Actually, no. Uh, what's his name? Who's the Who's the guy? Happy Hogan. What's his name? Joe John, Favreau. John, John Favreau. John Favreau. He John said Favreau. it's okay to call it baby Yoda. Yeah. Yeah. It's but that's much not the actual. I just name. didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know if they they actually yeah. uh, had said. Oh no, it's actually this. Name. Could be a reincarnation of the Yoda. Yeah. I think. Well. Apparently, so somebody said that all like Maybe Yoda, or like how Anakin Skywalker also was born out of the Force. Yeah, like how Yoda apparently was also stated to be born out of the Force. Like as far never... as we're concerned, he's the only one of his kind. Yeah, there's not like a planet of his. So like, there's not Yoda's banging, which thank God. <laughs> okay. That'd be weird because even at 50 years old, it's like you guys are babies. That's gross. <laughs> like Arya Stark, <laughs> you're disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> you're gross. Okay, yeah. Vasily, go. I was break this excited. down, man. Do Break this. it down. Okay. Well, obviously, like you said, he gave them, he got his big payout, like the most they've ever seen kind of thing. And obviously right away goes back to the, to the, um, to blacksmith. And that's the first time we kind of see all the rest of the bounty hunters there too. Like the rest of the Mandalorians, not yep. bounty hunters, Mandalorian specifically. Um, and yeah, you get a little bit more the of general a general public call them bounty hunters. Cause that's what they do. They hunt, they hunt bounties. But then you see in the later in the episode, there's how many other bounty hunters too. No, I know, but they're, they're all known. Mandalorians. The term bounty hunter is from the outside world. Okay, yeah. Right? I think that's how it I works. I don't know. No, well, I don't think okay, so. It's, it's, it's okay. What you I think you're trying to say is Mandalorians, you're both correct. They are Mandalorians, yeah. but they are technically also bounty hunters, but like you can't By just name, call them name like, and yeah. trade kind of they're, they're called the Mandalorians, but they're also like, because there's yeah. other bounty hunters, yeah. so you can't just say yeah. they're the like, bounty What do hunters? Mandalorians do? They hunt bounties. What are the like, bounty hunters? They're, like they're the Mandalorians. Elites. They're elites though at I, that point. Yeah, yeah because yeah. there's other bounty hunters in yeah. that organization. Mandalorians are bounty hunters. Bounty hunters aren't Mandalorians. There you go. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Ipso facto. <laughs> I'm your boss. No. Anyways. So it goes back. Uh, anyways. So you first see the rest of the Mandalorian bounty hunters. Yep. Eh, eh. Yep, yep. 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 Uh, and you can tell like they're eyeing him up. He's got. They know he has something. And then they finally go see what he's got. And has he never been paid with Imperial Silver? Imperial Mark Silver? So he. he No, he got paid before. Remember? With Imperial Mark si- Silver? Well, for taking the job, they gave him like, here's some. Sorry. Well, I, I should rephrase. Before, Before that. he got this job, when he did that first job that we got introduced to Carl Weathers, yeah, did he get paid with Imperial Silver, or is this the like? <gasps> that's fucking Apollo, isn't it? Carl Weathers. Yeah. Oh my god, that's who it is. Uh, <laughs> this entire time, <laughs> ding like, ding ding. I'm like, okay, this isn't the guy from like this isn't Lando. Like, who the no, fuck yeah. is this? No, no, that's oh Billy my D. god, that makes so much more sense. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so uh, I'm he just didn't saying, get like, paid. No, he got paid by other stuff. The, like no, he got the, yeah, he got by other currency like credits or whatever that okay. may be. Yeah, yeah. But Sorry, he yeah. got those two as like a taste for just taking the job, right? From the client, yeah. and uh, but yeah, he got so much more back and. Those guys like said, "Make it fast stacks, Mister White." Yeah, <laughs> yo, Mister White, yo, Mister White. Just have him appear in random TV shows and just say random lines <laughs> with no context. <laughs> yo, Mister White. I'm not even out, Mister White. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Name's Chris. <laughs> but yeah, they're all up in his grill. The rest of the bounty hunters, because like they see it as like a black mark. It's like these are these guys are the reason. It's kind of funny because. I guess Boba, Boba and Jango Fett worked for the Empire. Well, I think yeah. they did, but yet everyone before. 
And then after yeah. it all went down is when, like, I think that's the what I took. Like, kind of this thing. is the new so, order. Yeah. This, this is the, it's an era of the new order. Yeah. So, like, the, everyone's like, there's a black mark against that, but it's like, I'm getting paid Also, are, are the two Fets also Mandalorians? Are they, like... Yes. Yes, they are. But they have different armor. It's, so, it's, I, think, I think it's all this. It it's it's just a mask. The, the color and stuff is significant to... to I, I read into it a little bit. If certain colors signify what kind of bounty hunter they're at, like oh. if they do for like uh, justice, if they go for like vengeance, that kind of stuff, okay. the colors correlate oh. to what kind of bounty hunter they are, what their goal is kind of thing too. Um, so you see there's a little bit of a tiff there with those guys and like you, they don't like that he's being paid by this and like what the hell, man. Um, but any... That guy tries to take off his helmet. Yeah. Like, Which is a big no-no. That's no sin. I, I, I like liked, Luchador. I liked Shame. how in that scene... Yeah. Uh, two things. I liked how in that scene, they really dove into what the how the Mandalorians are with oh, each other. Like, yeah. There is a code of conduct. Mm-hmm. And then I also liked how they kind of showed the, the inner workings... This is very much. I, I, I had a very continental slash John Wick vibe. I was gonna say I that yeah, coming up. It's John Wick Star Wars, a hundred percent. I still haven't seen the third one, but I'm like, oh, this is like John Wick three. Just oh, from like, yeah. as soon as he started walking out, and everybody's like, oh, I'm like, oh, oh my god, yeah. that's exactly what it was. that's that's why I thought of it because I'm like, holy shit, this is John Wick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, <laughs> and no instead way. Of, and instead of having his dog, he's got this baby Yoda. <laughs> oh yeah, but arguably better. He gets arguably. that. He gets all that armor, like. Bad ass. Makes it's that, clean. That, that was like a Ooh. that was like a fucking video game moment where you get all the upgrades mm-hmm. and you go and then yeah. they, you go to Spider-Man the smelter and, yeah. yeah or God of War or something but, when you got all the like the things yeah. yeah but you did get to see the inner workings of how they are and like yeah. this is the way like it's cultish in a way it's like a religion almost to them mm-hmm. um, this the is their way, way of they, life yeah. exactly again this is the way they kept saying it <laughs> but but I got the feeling that because they've been purged themselves that mm-hmm. it's like we have to stick together it's, yeah. it's almost like our i guess uh culture of people i wouldn't mm-hmm. say race of people but yeah. our people yeah were persecuted by somebody and we have to stick together stick yeah. by our code and 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 if we if we don't we're like everybody yeah. else at that bar yeah because carl weathers is pretty much like the He's just a facilitator exactly. for all these bounty hunters. Yeah, he's, he, he's, he gets the contracts in and he did uh, them out. He's like a clan leader is what his, I think his title is. He's actually like a clan or something leader. Oh, like he's, so, okay. Yeah, yeah. Something of that sort. And he gives all these jobs to other bounty hunters too and stuff like that. But I did get, again, like you said, we see a little bit more where he gave two, two, uh, two bars for like the next generation of bounty hunters coming up mm. to create the armor for the found foundlings kind of thing so it's like oh, yeah. basically any any stray any strays or orphan kids yeah. could get brought into their into their world and stuff like that because he keeps having those flashbacks from his life and his parents dying is that our first time or the second time it's happened a couple of times he's had he's times? had those flashbacks before in the other two first episodes. episode because the for second sure episode the first, he was on the other planet oh and he never really had that i going don't on. remember for sure the first you're right though what I don't remember a flashback. I don't know. I just when don't he, recall in this, when, in this when, recent episode. No, in the like, previous. Oh, the first. Oh, one. yeah. He, I, I don't remember if it, was, it when they talk yeah. about the foundlings. There was a little bit of a flashback again, more of like um, just the chaos going on and that kind of stuff. You never actually see his parents per se. This time, it actually focused on where they were and stuff like that, and, and, and they, how he supposedly got to exactly to be where he is. But it's yeah, it's super interesting that the the beats of his flashbacks happen when. Major things are happening. Mm-hmm. What? What? Yeah, when the armor is being put together or hammered down or whatever. Yeah, that's when specific flashes are coming. Yeah. Also, there was a transition from his flashback to the armor. Yeah, I was like, that was clean as hell. That mm-hmm. reminded me of that was like, that was almost as clean as the fucking hand thing. This is the only good thing about I thought about uh, Suicide Squad with Enchantress when the hand came up under the other one. Yeah. and flipped it over. Oh yeah, that yeah. was a that was a fucking cool move. But in this <laughs> one, it felt it was just a really cool wipe when oh, it yeah. sh- when it showcased the, the fucking thing. I just think that this is gonna be like. It's really trippy watching this show just because it looks like a fucking movie, like so stupidly, like yeah. oh, it's great. Just well shot and yeah. just like yeah, age just like so HD and just like I don't mm-hmm. know, it's just so weird watching. But like every other sh- like they're gonna have to like catch up and like TV is gonna be fucking expensive and Ooh, like, yeah, more respected. Not like that's not, but like I it know like lots of people don't want to like go down to like do yeah. shows and yeah. shit like that, but like. Paul Rudd like doing a Netflix show, which is like I think is a pretty big thing. Because well, Paul Rudd's pretty yeah, big, like, definitely. Because yeah, yeah. growing up in like the 2000s stuff, like going to TV means like those guys' their careers were kind of mm-hmm. f- 
dwindling in a sense. Yeah. But now it's it's where you want to be. Mm-hmm. It's the elite. You can jump. Stars. You can jump back forth, no problem. Um, and they're getting the 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 attention and the credit that it needs and dumping money into it. I was Game of Thrones probably the biggest kickoff for that you would say, or what was before that? Lost. Then? Lost. Yep. Fair enough. I, I would I, say Lost I, is like I one of the Lost. Oldest, like, oldest shows I remember like hearing people like rave about. Oh, yeah. Sorry, The Wire, because it came before Lost, yeah, is one. The Wire. Uh, Sopranos. But those were in an era of few and far between. Whereas yeah. Lost kind of been like, we're definitely kicking this off. And then yeah. ever since that, then the, the writer strike happened. Yeah. But once they got back from the writer strike, then it was like, no, we're, this shit's popping right now. Like, yeah. this is the fucking shit. But there was that break point when the TV just yeah. went off. Did anybody else uh, have the Portals theme song coming in when they fucking came over the top? And it's like... Did you put it on after? Did you no, back up? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was just all of a sudden the, the fucking... Yeah. The rest of them just show up, which yeah, was, was like, cool. Where the hell is this guy's like fucking... What do you call it? Jetpack. Like, don't yeah. they all... Have, why does he not have a jetpack on him at all times? Well, it was funny because I was wondering. I'm like, where's his? And he's like, yeah. I got to get me one. <laughs> it was right at the end of the season, yeah. at the episode. Yeah, because the guy flew next to him yeah, and was like, giving them the... Yeah. yeah. And I think that was the same person. So was, the one guy that told him to get away that yeah, had the machine the gun, the yeah. they were fighting in there. Yeah. Um, Which, which was like... You know, this is this is fighting amongst yeah. brothers and arms, so to speak. But I find it weird though how like this guy Mando. I'm gonna call him Mando because I feel like that's his official name for now. Yeah, but Mando. He's like so highly respected on the outside world. Yeah, but, like he comes down on people already. Like they're ready to jump this guy, and I feel like well, he has that reputation of being like the John against, Wick. He went against his contract, kind of thing. He, he got paid when he got. Oh no, I think a lot of it was when he he because he, he gave that bounty to so many people. And oh, he yeah. was the only one to do it. Well, yeah, honestly. everyone was like, yeah, pissed off at him for that. But. but I don't know if it was because of that or because he actually accepted and gave up the baby. I, which think I don't ex- know how many people knew about it, but he I think took was, Imperial Silver. It was more the silver. And then when they heard like why he was getting bountied and like why people were going after him, they're like, oh, he like went back and like righted his wrong. Like, yeah. OK, yeah, 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 that's why that's 100 percent John Wick moment. Yeah. yeah. Open contract. <laughs> that, that's like end of end of yeah. movie two. Like, yeah. yeah, I need to that's... fucking watch that movie sometime soon. Like one over three. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Well, I, that's not that I don't want to. Oh, I thought like, you haven't seen yeah. the second one. No, too, on top of I'm like, I just haven't seen the third one. <laughs> yeah, no, it was. Seen Planet of the Apes, the war one. I got yeah, spoiled and just never watched it. But I don't still, care. I'll still watch it. Yeah. John Wick, I still haven't gotten spoiled. I just know that he yeah. lives because of the fourth one coming out. That was yeah. a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll good. see it when you see it. No, it was, but, a, good, it was uh, a good episode. I you know what I think why their production's really good? Hmm. Aside from the small moments where they show grand scope, mm-hmm. it's actually very contained and very small. Mm-hmm. So yeah. when they're showing the small towns, they're not really showing like the giant eight galaxy or eight planets that are behind it. No. It's focused and it's dialed in. A city street here and there, an actual But it place. focuses on the yeah. city, right? Like it, yeah. it's 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 shot the city very is its well. own character. Yeah, it's almost like this um it's it's like Six a weird kind city. of uh, <laughs> it's the fifth character. <laughs> Thank you. I was I was gonna try and quote halt, but I couldn't remember how many characters there were in Sex in the City. Wow, that was good. I'm actually embarrassed that I didn't catch on to that very quick. I knew he was a little. He didn't want to say it, though. (laughs) I have shamed us all. Oh, man, that's hilarious. Uh, Shut up, Meg. Um, I'm good. See, I redeemed myself in the Snyder Cut. First, I was so toxic, and now I'm very helpful in this conversation. Very good. Very good. good. DC is really bad on me. It's a toxic relationship. So I might be wrong then. Mm Mm-hmm. Because that's what I was—I was kind of a—I was gonna say because I thought this show wasn't gonna be about the the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda, but it, it turns out it might be more than rely heavily think. on the Mandalorian and yeah. Like I was just like, well, no, it's just the Mandalorian. This could just be a one-off thing, and then he maybe, but like maybe it's better this way because if he would have found out what happened, because it clearly they were doing experiments to extract the dare I say them metachlorians that are within this thing. Ooh. My guess is that's what yeah, like something. they're experimenting him on. Yeah. Um, I think they were trying to clone him, weren't they? Was that it? Why? No, sorry, no. I just read. I read somebody saying that this might be a clone, baby Yoda, because I was kind of like the same mm. time when they started cloning things. Like it could be because that's 50, not. He's fifty. It's not far fetched no. to think. Honestly, mm-hmm. it, it isn't. And that's interesting. It's funny. The doctor was trying to be humane to the to the baby Yoda, and like he said, he if said, it wasn't for me, he would have died. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, but it's then, cool seeing his gun at work. Like. Literally disintegrating fools. I was going to say, it's so weird seeing Star Wars in a violent way where it's yeah. like not just pew, pew, ah. It's like pew, pew. But with his, with his armor, he would have survived a good chunk of it anyway. Like mm-hmm. a lot of it just bounces off. And also, stuff the like stormtroopers, like with their dusty look, looks so nice. I, yeah. I do like that. Yeah. yeah. That fucking thing that he has, 
that oh that that grapple? scorpion get over here move yeah. that was dope. What the hell is the thing in his wrist? Oh, where like the those, auto tracker? Yeah. So he broke down a couple of those um, that armor, mm-hmm. and I guess she made the armor. Uh, the blacksmith made some specific like type of arrowheads and needles and stuff like that. But they're like they're like oh. tracking ones. Mm-hmm. Like Dude, those were like Iron Man's thing where yeah. he walked into Age of Ultron and he's like, all right, let's talk, and then he just shoots them all at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, Iron Man 1 where he shoots all of them in one shot. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that would have been really useful in the very end. Wow. Yeah. It's well, a, it's did he run out though? Cuz didn't seem like he used them all. Like I don't know why he wouldn't have used I guess he must have ran out. I feel like he I don't know how many he like had. six of them and it looked like he had 12 of those yeah, things. Yeah, he had a lot yeah. it looked like. I don't, know. I don't know. It was just one of those moments, but yeah, those were pretty cool that he he got those. So like yeah. it's almost like vibranium in a way. It's like smart metal. I don't know. Oh. Maybe. Or not vibranium. Or, or, thinking of like nanotech? No. Those Nano and Vibranium because the Vibranium... I don't think Star Wars operates with those types of metal. I think they, they have should. their own. Yeah. Maybe it's Durite. I'm, I'm just saying that the fact that they're able to technologically advance their armor to work a different way because even with like Vibranium, it gives them the technological advances. Does it not? Am I yeah, there's Yeah, Vibranium on black, like, and in Wakanda is like the most advanced smart in the world. Smart like, metal they kind can, of thing. They can almost. use it for so many different applications. Exactly. So maybe. So I'm thinking that... Well, I guess wrong. his suit, yeah, his and suit. But not the suit made of Vibranium, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. But again, we didn't see a lock target thing. It's just kind of a sensory thing. Maybe mm-hmm. I have no idea how that works. But and his handler or the bounty hunter's handler is not dead, so he's yeah. going to come back. Yeah. And it was interesting. I think that one scene where he's like, "Oh, everyone is like jealous of you or whatever." Yeah. I think it was more people are disgusted by you, and he was trying to spin it mm-hmm. as they're jealous of you because I've given this bounty to everybody. Yeah. But I could be wrong. It's you fun. think they're disgusted that he gave up the kid. I think there was that, and I all or and and taking the imperial silver. It's not a bad idea, but they're also they were at the very end. The bounty was for imperial silver. Yeah, so unless they're it just was? like, well, I assume so. I, like, they were out. Were, I think they're they, they melted it all down. But well, who else would have like placed that bounty on him? He only had two in his uh, in his chest. That's why he didn't yeah. die, right? So no, I mean like the actual people he stole from. I set think, the bounty. I think Carl. Oh, was it them? Well, I assume. Like, why make the most? I thought it was. Well, who the fuck would have placed a bounty on? I him thought it was then? Carl Weathers' guy. Like I thought it was. Well, maybe like I just a, missed that. It was yeah, like Carl the, Weathers. Yeah, it was one. It was one of them. Because yeah. we never saw. It was, it was for sure. It was either the client or that, but it happened quick, right? We didn't see the client guy after he gave up the kid. No, we only saw him behind the scenes when that thermo scan. That thing doctor was probably happening. made a call, and then right away he called the guy, and and everything went up. Kind yeah, of that's maybe. what I thought happened. I thought it was because he turned on Carl Weathers' character, yeah. and then all of a sudden it was like. You know, they, he basically broke the bounty hunters code 100 percent. So right. it's like but I don't that's why I don't think the client did it. I think that the other guy did it like Carl Weathers did it. But did he know because he Cause looked, who else has access to all of them? He was he would be the only one yeah, that has access. So. To but all didn't their, he look at his thing? I, I don't know. Huh. Someone else might have access that. I don't know we'll because I out. thought I, I'm going to rewatch the episode for sure. Yeah. Probably. And I noticed that he lifted his up to his thing. Like, oh, this guy's. He must have messed up. Oh, yeah. He's also because there. again, he already broke a rule by asking. Maybe he the asked the client what's did. Pff, who knows because he got away with the money anyway. So yeah. the fact that he asked was a rule deal break, like a yeah. rule breaker. Yeah, but I it didn't warrant that because he would have no. gotten it already. No, he just walked away from it. He's like, "What are you going to do with it?" And he's like, "That's not part of the deal." And like, that's you, not that's, part isn't of the isn't deal. that against your guys' code kind of thing too? So I don't know. Very, I, I thought it was a great third episode. I think um, every episode has been. People are somehow complaining about the show, saying it sucks. Listen, it's, like, it's not a like slower many, pace, and you actually. Like, f- I genuinely enjoy how yeah, short it is. It feels too. it goes by very quickly. You it's like, you know what? I like it a lot. It, it might focus on one or two things, but I think it goes by really well. I really hope the MCU shows follow this format. I hope. Mo- I hope almost all shows. Follow I will this watch format. the yeah. MCU. I watch every single MCU show if it follows yeah. this format. It will well, not. They be are. Erased. They are going to be doing week to week episodes, which is whether how I'm excited to watch like TV. It's like, oh, cool, Friday's happening. Let's watch it. Like now, we'll have See, something to talk that's, about. <laughs> that's the other thing too. It's like you actually have something to look forward to like yeah. today after work i'm like cool i got I'm done work at 4 30 i get home i've got me a half an hour 45 minutes before we come here to do the show yeah and it's like great i can watch the mandalorian just before we get yeah. here it's just the perfect amount of time i'm it's fresh in my mind and it gives me something to look forward to just right after too like yeah because there's also all this other stuff that i can watch after while mm-hmm. i'm editing or whatever mm-hmm. but, yeah no it's it's it was a it was a very good yeah. next episode and it was super cute when he he put the, he gave him the stick yeah, at the yeah, top yeah. of the stick just ship. Dropped it. Like that and you just see his little hand or <laughs> yeah. whatever and then 
it was yeah there's i yeah it, you know what i i like I, I gotta go back to this there is something really cool about us as people that could understand understand meaning in somebody not An saying emotion. anything i was just gonna mention a mask yeah. well yeah when he was it just I said like, it was started started zooming week. on his face in the mask and he was like contemplating whether like to go back or not and it's yeah. like it's just like you see nothing, but it's like, oh my god, like, I he's feel like, it. Yeah, like he's really like thinking about. <laughs> and this. don't get me wrong, it's manipulated with the way the camera mm-hmm. moves in and out and stuff. For However, sure. we still have to be able to have that ability mm-hmm. to pick up on that. Oh yeah, it's it's such a cool thing, and you only see it in times like this. I think yeah. like, and there was somebody that made a comment about. Uh, oh, it was Willem Dafoe who said like a lot of the superhero movies are very loud and long, mm-hmm. and like nobody says no to me. But I think when he's right. Because he's not dissing them. He's just saying they're really loud yeah. and they're long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I get that because they are. And a lot of these shows are super bombastic and loud. And when you get to something like this, like, I don't know, man, it's it's a whole different experience. And it's a very welcome and enjoyable experience. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's really cool. And then uh, something else that's really cool. It was really fun that came out this week. Uh, th- apparently, Julia Roberts was supposedly somebody, some exec had said, let's cast julia roberts as harriet tubman for a harriet tubman movie okay harriet tubman who freed the slaves um uh through the underground railroad Mm -hmm. like one of the most prominent figures in in history right and they were gonna have julia roberts doing it now this was a long time ago so anybody that's listening is like what the fuck whatever this isn't happening now it happened a while ago Mm -hmm. early 90s okay you have to understand yeah so you have to understand that Times were different back then. 12 Years a Slave didn't come out, and that was a game changer for a lot of these movies, right? Or for movies going forward. And there was other ones that came up to it. The reason I want to bring this up is because, like, obviously the, the comments are like, oh, you fucking this, fucking that, whatever. Let's really just think about the fact that we were at one point operating like this, mm-hmm. and it was something that some people talked about, and now we've moved to a place where Nobody would ever bring that up. Mm-hmm. Let's also talk about the fact that nobody greenlit this. It was just so an wait, idea. And exact before you move that, on, are yeah. you saying like this isn't new? Like this isn't news that they're doing it, but it, like people are bitching about it now. It just came out because get a life go outside. Well, no, 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 man, I'll tell you why. Because the guy that was writing it, that wrote the Harriet movie, mm-hmm. was like an exec actually brought this up. So he was it was it came out recently. Yeah, and and so he was talking about it. But I really want people to focus on this. That was then. Mm-hmm. It's not that now. That would never even come to anybody's mind. Mm-hmm. Things are different. Things are better. Things have progressed. People have gotten better. So before you see that online or whatever and you want to bitch about it, just look at, hey, things have gotten better from that. Mm-hmm. We don't operate like that. That was t- that took place back then. Mm-hmm. And it's it's great to see where we are now that that would never happen. So... It's just one of those things I saw. It's kind of, this is kind of like a PSA, but yeah. I think it's worth looking at it from the side of, oh yeah, that's what it was back then, but that's mm-hmm. not what it is now. Uh, and finally, do you like Pornhub? Well, for three hundred dollars, you can get a lifetime subscription. Yes, that's right. Pornhub has joined the streaming wars, and uh, they're packing some heat. So, um, <laughs> so here's the thing: not even a lot, no word of a lie. This is an odd flex, odd break. I haven't seen porn, watch porn good for you. since end of May, good March, for you. end of March. Good for you. It's good. I don't, what is the streaming? Like, what is it going to be? Like, just straight up. Like, you just get, you instead of paying monthly or whatever, you get a lifetime supply of porn on videos for yeah. three. And they're going to be producing. But you already get really? a lifetime supply for I free. They're premium like, there's so them. much. I'll there's you, premium yeah, because, stuff. Because there's the premium stuff. They're probably going to create movies. They're probably going to have. I really, if they do, like, actually, like, I really want them to be stupid and like, do, like, series where it's, like, trying to be, like, serious, but also, like, Someone's getting banged every episode. <laughs> oh, you mean eight people getting banged eight different times every yeah. episode? Yeah. yeah, I just thought it was so, so funny. We saw that last say, night. You could finally say I'm watching porn for the plot. <laughs> I don't know, man. I Dream of Jenna had a pretty legit plot. There you go. And all the parodies that are coming out. I mean, I really want to have. I really want to see what happens to Gamora and Star Lord when they stop banging on the, <laughs> on the Milano. Oh wait, he doesn't uh, have the Milano anymore. No, uh, anyways, that accurate. was the last they don't one. Care. Yeah, um, this is just really funny. Yeah. And so that's it's so funny that the caption was they're joining the streaming wars. That is one of the funniest things I've seen this week. I just like, Pornhub is just even with WWE, like, they'll roast 
wrestlers. Like they'll watch it live yeah. and tweet about it and make fun of them. Which brings me to my last point. I just want to say this because I realized online I use this quote because I was roasting somebody. I was gonna say online I use Pornhub a lot. Like you literally no. just said you don't. Want so this it. even like when I was doing the Snyder Cut thing, I realized okay, like I'm I'm being a fucking clown right now. So yep. CM Punk said this, and I think it really relates to a lot of people online. Yep. So it's best to stay quiet and be presumed an idiot rather than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. True, true. That's it. That kind of goes to what I was talking about last night. Because mm-hmm. my brother's like, why don't you just fucking say what the show's about? I'm like, no, because I want to downplay it as much as possible so it's a pleasant surprise. That's if I, I, I'm so worried about overhyping it uh, that someone's going to listen and be like, oh, it's not as good as they said. And then behind my back, they're like talking like that, that I try to keep expectations as low as fucking possible. Because mm-hmm. like, I love this show. Yeah. I love where it's gone. But I also know it's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. And I also never like, mm-hmm. I don't, I, I don't like promoting myself at all. Mm-hmm. It makes me super uncomfortable, mm-hmm. except when we're on the show and so, like in public. So, yeah, but it was it's kind of that thing. It's it's that's a very wonderful quote. Well, for entertain facts, like that's what I tried doing, too. Like I never like go out of my way saying like I if somebody asked me like, oh, I hear you have a social media page. I never say, yeah, I have like 80,000 followers. I'm like, yeah, you know, I just post facts about movies and like TV shows. It's like, yeah, you know, like whatever. It's nothing special because it's not it wasn't anything. There's special. a happy medium, though, because like I've seen him like ext- to the point of like he doesn't want to talk to anybody about it. So there has yeah, to be a happy true. medium. So you have to like, yes, you want you got to talk about it, but you don't have to like over promote it just talk about it just say hey we don't find a way we don't take ourselves seriously like give your tagline like you do and that's it but there has to be a happy meeting you go to the point of like i don't even want to talk to the people about it and that's it yeah because it like it makes me freeze up right because i I just it's yeah i don't know but the problem is too is that so when you see somebody and they're super hyped about something naturally it gets you hyped up Mm -hmm. right that's what happens to me like the one guy there sean Mm -hmm. he's super excited about his stuff and i get excited like because he's super excited and I'm doing the opposite where it's like, oh, I'm just going to downplay it or whatever. And the one guy ended up subscribing to us, which is really cool. The one guy who said he would? Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, or at least he said he did last night. I don't know if he's listened to anything. But um, if he listens to it and he's like, man, this is way better than he said, that's what I want. Yeah. Same with that review we got. It's like, this is a lot better than I thought it was going to be. And we got a really good review that's out of it. you want to be. That's like, mm-hmm. that's my dream of how I want this to happen. Surprisingly mediocre. Yeah. Again, <laughs> best podcast you'll never you know, honestly, know. Honestly, for a podcast, surprisingly mediocre is actually a compliment because there's so many, right? There's so oh, many podcasts. For sure. like, be called mediocre is like, you know what? Okay. Next up's adequate. Well, yeah, exactly. And I said, <laughs> I said we focus on the characters and the personalities of us. And, and, and like we're not caricatures or facsimiles of ourselves. Mm-hmm. We are just who we are. Mm-hmm. And like some people like it, some people don't. And I'm like, we've got a great yeah, niche of like 10, 15 people or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Don't remember the Limp Bizkit song? <laughs> that wasn't Limp Bizkit. Uh, that was Corn. Ah, Corn, that's it. <laughs> You're such a, a loser. Oh, I think wow. it was Corn. Hold on. <laughs> We're both wrong. Actually, hold on. I think we both might be wrong. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, P-D- P-O-D. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, We're such of, losers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not Puddle of Mud. I, There's I, something I was, else. P-O-D. Fuck, this came out years Pod. ago. That's funny. Jesus. Yeah. Artist Pod. What the fuck were they called? Anyways. Uh, pay, payable on death. That's what Ooh. they're called. Fuck, we were so we used to listen to that when we played go, um, GTA for some reason. But anyways, we're both wrong. We're both idiots. Congratulations right. to us. But anyway, like cool, that's cool. that's the thing. But so for any of you guys listening, if you do like this show and you do want to, you know, subscribe to wherever you're listening to, so you get notified. You want to leave us a review or something. It is very much appreciated because it's. And if you want to share it to your friends, I think we are gonna like it. You know, um, that's how this will grow. That's how I would rather it grow as opposed to me and you and us going out there and being like, listen to the fucking show. Right. Stickers everywhere. (laughs) Yeah. Like and don't get me wrong. A lot of people are like, well, if you do all this stuff, it'll grow and stuff. I'm like, yeah, but like, I don't know. It's 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 interesting. I, I don't know what the thing is. So wherever you're listening from we appreciate just the fact that you're listening and if you can do any of that stuff that i'd mentioned that would be great um and then let your friends know whoever you think is going to be interested um if you have you know anything that you do want to bring up or whatever you can email us at the f podcast at gmail.com you can find the f podcast on instagram and on facebook you can follow the do you still do your uh lazy canadian yeah okay good just checking <laughs> i see this man likes a lot lazy canadian on uh, on instagram as well um now that anthony's done his uh his fine his midterms 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 just before his finals he's gonna be rolling out some more videos so i'm gonna try to backlog some of them so i don't release them all at once um but yeah 
it, it's just it does mean a lot the fact that even one person listens to it and Arturo I know you're out there buddy uh, and whoever else listens uh yeah it just means a lot and if it's just one person then fuck we'll be doing this show just for that one person mm-hmm. but again if you do think anybody else would enjoy this let them know I'm G I'm Anthony I'm Vass and we're out. Thank you.